should I put a light on him now? Just to just to try it out, and then that way it's ready in case when we need it. Beating on the go, huh? <laughs> he told me get in the car. He didn't even tell me we were gonna have a shit. Tell me we were gonna go to Disneyland. <laughs> you, got, you know the little uh, uh, cachet. Yeah, he he already prepped me about. Well, he's pretty good at prepping people. I can tell you that. I have a little insight in terms of politics in Berkeley. I have served on the police review commission. Uh, I have been a member of the Berkeley City Council, the Redevelopment Agency, and the Housing Authority. Uh, also have uh, been a member of the uh, Democratic Central Committee, and uh, uh, my uncle was the first African American elected to the Berkeley City Council in 1961. Twenty years later, I was elected to the City Council in Berkeley. Taria Hall Pittman had a program called Negroes and the News. And that was one of the first times you had uh, women way out front in leadership positions. And this uh, preceded uh, by 30 and 40 years the women's movement uh, in the uh, East Bay. She was the uh, uh, NAACP regional uh, wide uh, director so all up and down the state of California she had import and impact and she was looking for ways for African Americans to to win and to be on top and Frances Albreyer uh, she was just magnificent she uh, ran for the city council uh, the first African American woman to run for the city council in the 1930s she was in the forefront uh, of making sure that uh, the first black teachers were hired in Berkeley. That's why uh, uh, Mayor Gus Newport and James Sweeney co-sponsored legislation and made sure that uh, Francis Albreyer's name uh, was on the building at San Pablo Park. She led picket lines in terms of indicating that we shouldn't shop where we can't be hired. Um, she was very much in the forefront of those endeavors, as was Taria Hall Pittman at the time as well. Byron Rumford was ahead of his time. They did not have the kind of television coverage that we have today where we can instantly see what's going on. They didn't have the press coverage because they were embarrassed, because they were beat by this black man out of Berkeley, California, who not only represented Berkeley, but he had clients everywhere. People were calling him from Bakersfield, from Fresno, from Madera. They were calling him from every part of California. So even though he was elected, uh, he went to these meetings up and down the state. So his election was not just in Berkeley, it was also up and down the state of California because they needed services and Rumford provided those services many times out of his own pocket. I remember Proposition 14 being a wedge issue. In other words, look, folks are looking to try to get better and do better to get housing wherever their money and their ingenuity can take them. And when you had these restrictive covenants, we know that there was a no to that. And we know that Rumford was the big statewide person who ultimately said, we've got to be able to live wherever we can buy. And so restrictive covenant means that this is a contract, and the contract says when you have a deed to the home, that means you own the home. Now, within those deeds are provisions. Some of the provisions say no blacks, don't sell the blacks, don't sell the Mexicans, don't sell to Asians, don't sell to Jews. Those are written into these covenants and these covenants are on the contracts. so when people sell their houses, those contracts explicitly spell out that exclusion and discrimination is to be practiced. And that is what William Byron Rumford helped to overturn.